Hello and welcome back. We're just... Oh, am I Ita? We're just about to check out the legendary uh, wizard, Archimere. Also, apparently there's some traps there. Marie's metal work. A lot of uh, interesting places we want to check out. Am I Ita? Don't run away. Quench your thirst on the way up the mountain? Um, what do you serve here? Spirits and the like? No one this side of the slope will scorn you for a little indulgence. She smiles. Between us, folks tend to linger and spend coin in parikis when they've had a few. Good for business, I say. Show me what you got. So, grog, ale, milk, healing received. So if I buy that for the crew, the crew won't be sad. Resolve, but lower dexterity. More healing received. Con, but lower dexterity. Let's go and get some milk for the crew. Right? Uh, sure. Great! Some milk for the crew. They will love it. Curious Lantern, name your price. You have no right to interfere in Rawatai's business. Hawana culture is in business, you company drudge. Wait, what? Isn't that trap? It looks like a trap. Stray cat. We found uh, juice. The sea is true home, not smelly mountain. Worthless idiot. <laughs> wow. What you want? The imp recoils from you with a sharp hiss. What are you doing here? Eh, Archimere doesn't let worthless idiot outside after worthless idiot spray dung on stupid tablet. Aww. But Archimere not home. The mischievous grin splits the imp's uh, bony features. So worthless idiot watches the ships come in. Looks at all the tasty gulls. It sighs down at the vista of ocean and docks. Your name is Worthless Idiot? Eh, those Archimere's big words. Gave name, but Worthless Idiot, no understand. Worthless Idiot ranges a finger in its ear. I'm pretty sure he meant it as an insult. Eh? That's so? Worthless Idiot should ask Stinkfoot or Catbreath what they say. Oh, you want to set sail and eat goals? You're welcome aboard the Defiant. Tim takes in your words, its eyes widening to the size of moist saucers. A flap of its wings carries it closer to whisper in your ear. How often you beat your crew, huh? <laughs> I don't, not yet at least. Only when they're nosy. Follow my orders and we shouldn't have a problem. Only when they displease me. I can't say all the time. I don't, not yet at least. No beatings? None? It blinks, struggling to encompass the idea. <laughs> I join crew? I join crew! The imp flutters in an excited little circle. It points down at the distant shape of Queen's birth and uh, salivates at the sight of Gold's landing on the rigging of the Defiant. It did join the crew. This is amazing. Oh, shut the fuck up. He's a great guy. I don't give two pyres for your tribal pride, and I wager that Archimir cares even less. The Amana woman clutches her fists at her, at her sides. Her severe features are caught in an unshakable grimace. If this is what passes for Rao Tai in diplomacy, Razanui has bigger problems. The more calm and composed Huana smiles, turning when she notices you. If you've come to see Archimir, you're too late. He left the estate on wizard business. Did you say wizard business? Alchemy could be drinking koiki wine with dead kings. 
There's no finding him if he doesn't want to be found. What's going on between you two? Tamar and I wanted something from Archimere. Our powers of persuasion leave much to be desired. The wizard got his hands on a Hawana tablet, the Harappo epic. I came to reclaim it for Rawatai. Right. In the middle of my negotiations, this little pest showed up with a claim on it. The Harappo epic belongs to the Huana. The queen sent me to remind you both. Doesn't matter, it's just a dumb tablet. An intact primary source is rare to find for the Huana. Akira. Few outsiders can appreciate what such an artifact could mean to our people. It's garbage. Posturing about cultural value is worthless. We both want the tablet for the same reason. Would that be the Archmage Archimere? I'm fond of his dazzling lights. <laughs> wow. That is awfully suggestive. The same. He keeps to himself, inviting no one but Fasina behind the walls of his estate. Maybe if I fix Fasina's problem, she can sneak me in. He and his apprentice run the Dark Cupboard, a local magic shop. How did Archimere come to possess the tablet? I believe that he had dealings with black market treasure hunters. Not that the Queen will implicate him. She's too preoccupied negotiating with the warmongers at her door. So what's your plan? I might as well adjourn to the palace in Serpent's Crown and give Archimere time to think. What a load of... <sighs> you mean to get your hands on that tablet with or without Archimere? You island rats can barely write your own names, much less a distinguished epic. Nataha blinks at her in shock and takes a moment to smooth down the creases in her uniform. Scamper back to the Brass Citadel and spin your own plots. I will happily do the same on my side of the island. Uh, I don't care. I have questions for you, Natehi, before you go. For me? I could use a reprieve. Natehi watches Tumara skulk away, turning back to you only when she's gone, and lets out a heavy sigh. Oh, these are frustrating times we live in. Natehi opens her palms, inviting you to speak. Any ideas on retrieving uh, the Harapu epic? There's always Fasina, Archimere's apprentice. No love lost there if whispers are true. Hmm, Natehi shrugs. Archimere seems to enrage those of his inner circle, not excluding the imps. I had questions about the tablet. Akira, I say the relevance of the Harapo epic can't be overstated. It could prove a touchstone for the Huana. It could even... Sorry. You go ahead. Hmm. Why is the tablet so important to you? It is important to all who call the dead fire home. I only tell you this because I know you can be trusted. Me? Wow. The epic is supposed to contain information on Ukaizo. Ah, oh, it's a mythical island. Nothing as dramatic as a set of coordinates, but anything helps. Stories are also important to the Huana. Much of who we are is still missing. That's all I wanted to okay. know. The pleasure is mine. You don't need a dumbass tablet written long ago to, uh, to tell you who you are. So, uh, probably not much point. Uh, talking with Fasina right now. We have to first Did help the her out. Summon everyone to the palace? Akira, I've never seen Arui he run so fast. Do you think the Audra Colossus would come here next? Pray to Kaopa, it does North not. North exit. Well, I didn't even try to enter the Archimedes Manor. I can't even do it. I'm pretty good, huh? Mechanics too low. Total mechanics, too low. <laughs> That's not good. I definitely want to pump up my mechanics. Log difficulty 10. Partius is 2. But Watcher doesn't have enough. This is a problem. This is a problem I need to uh, think about. We might need to do a, a bit of respecking, so the party is gonna be more ideal. Oh, 
Actually, stealing is probably the least valuable one. Stealing and sneaking around. That's not too useful. Mechanics. Now nah, that's good. It's tempting to put it on, uh, on the main character because she's gonna be in the party always. What is this place? Water Shapers Guild. One huge room. Guildmaster Myru. You have shirked your duties for the last time, I say. Guildmaster in fine robes stares down the sizable blue-skinned Almana before her. <clears throat> Students observe the exchange in a loose circle, exchanging whispers. Guildmaster, be reasonable. He tosses his anemone like uh, hair, which goes faintly as each uh, bulbous strand settles in place. I skipped one lecture to travel up the mountain. Still, the palace is closed until you present me before Onikaza. He crosses his arms and raises one eyebrow. The murmurs of the crowd grow in volume. You went alone. I asked for patience, but as usual, you make a trench out of a tide pool. Damn. Look all these people worrying about uh, nothing. I'm grabbing my popcorn. This sounds important or controversial or both. Ikira, it's always both where this one is concerned. <laughs> she nods toward Takehu. My patience wears thin, old shark. You have stifled me enough for one trip through Rakuhu's bowels. Barat is Rikuhu. In spite of the obvious age difference, Takehu raises an instructive finger to the guildmaster. She flares her nostrils and takes a deep breath. I say Ngati weeps at her petulant spectacle of a child. He's the child of Ngati, Andra, the goddess of the sea? Ikera, the significance is clearer to some than others. He waves toward the guildmaster with the back of his hand. For a water shaper who treasures his duty to the goddess, you spend too many days cavorting at the brothel. No! Not the brothel? The guildmaster sidesteps the Kahu and takes a long takes long strides away from the circle. Sparing another glance at the Kahu, the crowd disperses. Ugh, insufferable. The Kahu sighs and smooths uh, back his hair. He turns his attention to you with a raised brow. Did you need something? Or is it enough to bask in perfection? The Kahu grins and opens a palm, inviting you to speak. Bask in perfection? You want to get murdered? Uh, have you got something to tell the crown? Kara, I sent the prince a missive and heard nothing back. Takeho crosses his arms and sighs. He is a busy warrior in a time of peace, I say. Let's go talk to him together then. Being a watcher tends to open doors. A watcher? And here I am used to being the freak of Pariki's overlook. He rests a hand on his hip and grins. What does a watcher do? A watch. I commute with the spirits of the dead. I'm an intermediary between here and the in-between. I'm the Herald of Berat, for now at least. I watch most of the dead. <laughs> wow, I love it. Way to uh, put it uh, the, the creepiest way possible. Akira. Just so. He strokes his chin, nodding. Nice. I say I am no sailor, and I know even less about death. I am an artist. He stirs his fingers through the air, drawing together droplets of moisture into an orb of water that floats over his palm. My peers do not understand. Water shaping to them is like studying calligraphy. To brew ink and sort parchment. He lets the orb fall to the ground and splash at his feet. Um. Wait, what? Well, I'm curious to see what you can do. The tide brings unexpected gifts. Why, is he a companion? You are not unknown to me, I say. Whispers of an Adra Colossus reach my ears. 
Yeah. And louder whispers of a corpse who follows him. That's me. The guy who raises uh, one of his brows. What will you do when you catch up to this walking god? Yeah, offer a few compliments, buy him a drink, see where it goes from there. <laughs> For me, there is not enough rum in the dead fire to even consider it. If it untangles me from the guild's apron strings, then you can mount me as the figurehead of your fair ship. Great! The guy inclines his head and touches uh, the circular marking on his brow. Our quarters may smell a fish before long, but your crew will be more beautiful by association, I say. What? <sighs> no one's ever called me beautiful before. Blushing, she averts her gaze. Let's be up. Lead on. It will be good to put some distance between myself and the guild, even if we find less savory places along the way. What? A fair warning, Captain. Ingati gifted her favorite son with more than his stunning complexion. The guy who dusts his hair and sighs contentedly. Are you hiding an anglerfish lure under the rope? What? Can you breathe underwater? Good guess. Only for as long as... well... The guy who folds his arms and considers... I say you will learn. In time. Well, I can... Uh, we can learn the hard way, you know. I can just uh, try to drown you. He thinks his eyes suddenly as dark as beads of polished onyx. He's a druid or chanter? Well, he definitely should be a druid instead. What a smug bastard, by the way. Holy crap. Unbelievable. I think he's gonna be a druid. And I'm not gonna take him along for now. Actually, I'm kinda tempted to dismiss Constanzen. It's about time I went my own way. And put in a lot instead. <laughs> I don't know. Constantin, the the whorehouse masseuse, looking for adventure, the Kehu, the smug druid, who... I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> Wait. I should have higher mechanics right now, because Elat is in the team. Is that so? How much higher though? Mechanics 5, plus 1 from Artist, but plus 2, plus 1, it's a little bit higher, not that much. Pity is Nagati, Lady of Lament, as the Pearl Orb of the Heavens crosses her view. Uh, Varua? Young Kuana holds out his hand as if to catch an incoming missile. He winces in concentration. Oh, there's a typo there! And an orb of water rises and floats me there. Sweat drips down his nose. He flinches, and in that instant the water loses all shape and splashes on the floor. Crestfallen, he sighs and drops his stance. Did you need something? He nods to you and shakes out his arms, readying himself for another try. You seem to be having trouble. I can feel the connection to Andre just like Myru taught me. But there's something missing. Maybe it's my form. You remember to hold your breath and keep your knees together. <laughs> yeah. Really? That isn't how the Guildmaster taught it. It's true. His brow creases with uncertainty. That's okay. Persistence is everything, right? Yeah, he shrugs. Oh. Shh. What? Exceptional robe. Great! Guildmaster Myru. Wait, what? Oh, we can go into the ruins. Let's take a look. 
Looting is uh, probably out of the question. You have questions for me. Speak up, I say. Guildmaster Myra folds her arms and nods. Tell me about the guild. Ikira, my pleasure. Water shaping is a talent bestowed on the Juana by the goddess Ngati. Great. Uh, less brainwashing. Uh, nonsense, more actual information. Yuriki was the first in recent memory to organize the talent into a series of teachable forms. Right. What else would you like to know? <clears throat> what do we water shapers do exactly? We control tides, prevent storm damage, and keep unwelcome ships at bay. Lately, we have experienced an artistic revival of sorts, thanks to our star pupil, Takehu. Right. We represent the best of Juana achievement. No small responsibility. Where do the water shapers get their power? Our art is the yield of the Juana's ancient covenant with the goddess. Right. Our ancestors pledged to protect the luminous Audra, the islands, and the tribes. Ngati gifted us with the strength to keep our promise. Hmm. Back to my other questions. Akira, speak freely. I don't have any more questions. <laughs> Apparently. The cat who is the star student. <clears throat> this ornate basin makes a high-pitched uh, ringing sound when uh, pressure is applied around the outer rim. Alright. Let's just check out the ruins, I suppose. Hmm. I just assumed that they were water wizards, but maybe there is more to it than I and I originally assumed. It could be the case. Because uh the guy we picked up is actually a druid, so I suppose that's an explanation. Ain't said he's got regulations against this sort of place. No. Guild druids? What? The stone door is sealed shut. A few engraved symbols stand out among the other carvings and inscriptions. Apart from that, you find no evident means of opening the way. A faded inscription is nestled among the elaborate stone carvings. Search for the locking mechanism? As you search among the door's ancient uh, carvings, you come upon a stone panel that seems to protect an internal mechanism. The panel remains fixed and unmoving. Read the inscription. Juana runes decorate the stone entrance. Nagati would not have gifted her chosen people a watery covenant unless they persisted in deserving it. The sanctum is covenant of our making. Only the sigil of the covenant and the words of my devotion will open the way. Periki, master of the guild. Push against the door? <laughs> The door stands resolutely shut. No amount of brute pressure will influence that one way or another. Well, I'm gonna punch it. You slam your fist against the door with all your might, bloodying your knuckles in the process. Ah, this is basically not gonna work. Did I manage to injure myself? Pirate. Obsidian Spall. Anything over here? Hey, water shapers. A canoe. I can pick that up. Oh, that would be stealing. Exceptional scale armor. Wait, what? Oh, we did run into a trap. But it's it it not it's not hostile. It was just an accident. At least they don't consider it hostile that I triggered the trap, that's what I mean. Ink harp. Okay, a few things that we can loot. Wait a second. This statue depicts an omen a woman, her hand extended and gasping, grasping at the air. An eroded plague uh, sits by her feet. 
Something about the statue calls out to you. The echo of a fractured soul that tarried in this place for a long and thoughtful years. You feel victory tingled by grief and regret. Inspect the lingering soul. Your vision bobs with the motion of the sea. You stand aboard the deck of swift winds where you where your mates, sharing a bemoused, uh, self-congratulatory day, congratulatory glances as they work. Uh, one of them claps uh, your back with approval. You step back and aim a reproachful look at your mates, however friendly his intent. You know there will be time for reprieve when you are squared away in a kataka. Something cuts through the water to your port side. An enormous shape just beneath the waves. Someone shouts that the winds have turned in your favor at last. This is followed by an enthusiastic cheer among the crew. You don't share their mu their mirth. Eyes to the horizon, I say. You bring home a mighty gift, though it takes an unusual form. One that you pray to Nagati, you're able to keep in check. The vision dissipates and you land your... Your lands... Your land... Legs reassert uh, themselves. Hold her hand. You grasp her hand with tenderness. At first nothing happens, but then... A tiny droplet of water forms at the corner of her eye and rolls down her cheek, dripping on the floor. Wipe away the tear. You reach out and draw your thumb down the statue's cheek, wiping away the trail of moisture. For a moment, the stone feels soft to the touch. Attempt to read the plaque. The words are much uh, eroded and water damaged, but a few choice snippets of phrases stand out with clarity. Periki, Lore, and Hunter crossed the lengths of and back again, membered for Cunning Deal, Lafus, may her rest, Yulti Soul Freedom. Continue. Closer scrutiny reveals that the inscription was purposefully marred, an act of sabotage done perhaps years ago, by the frugalness you suspect. Kit hands. Uh, okay. Canu, what about you? What say, friend? The guild sanctum has seen better days. What do you do here? Simply a caretaker. I dust off Pariki's tomb and try to keep the place tidy. Sounds good. Caring for the guild hall usually means drying off what others get wet in practice. Canu <sighs> shakes his head with a very smell. What's behind the stone door by the staircase? A sanctum for master water shapers, I say. No students or outsiders allowed. All right. I have never been there myself. Myru assures me the room has no need of cleaning. He shrugs, smiling. Are you a water shaper? Akira. One of <laughs> middling skill, if I am generous. Not all of us can boast of Takehu's talent. But Nagati touches us differently, I say. Okay. Don't go into that. <laughs> the guild didn't used to allow outsiders the freedom of our halls. Ikira. But how times change. The inscription by Berki's tomb has been defaced. Water damage, I thought. Kanu scratches the back of his head. I say it's been that way since I got here, but... I cannot recall if the former steward ever mentioned it. Hmm... There's nothing in there that would help me solve the puzzle. And I don't think we uh, learned anything that could possibly help with this door. I don't think so. Wait, we have an injury. System shock. Of course, punching the door. Wrong choice. Well... At least we tried something, okay? Hmm. No 
Okay, we gotta go out and maybe check out the bathhouse. I think we deserve a time off. Just pop in there. Also, I'm pretty sure that Pillars of Eternity 1 had six character limits. Am I wrong about that? Am I just crazy? I could be pot right. potentially crazy. He does do that with his hands. Fine, tis rough in his precious spelly book that scares the lad. Or maybe tis notch in his wee finger. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop. My sides hurt. <laughs> oh, oh, I miss this. That's... Surely you've spied how he's always brushing himself. He won't say, but he's afraid of seagull shit. Damn. I know about the level up. I don't want to press it right now. Tophers Raymonds? Sounds like a... An armor merchant. We should check out. Perhaps right now. Lolfer. If you find yourself in need of comfortable garb, I'm happy to oblige. The dwarf dips his head in a curt, professional manner. You're a tailor. I've been known to rip a seam here and there, patch some shredded gear back into shape. His expression shifts, turning sour. Thought I was an armorer, did you? Assume that my tree stump limbs and barrel chest lend themselves better to the forge than the needle? Grab him by the collar, what the hell? His eyes snap open as uh, you hoist him off the ground. Lofer, Yolfer, clutches his, he clutches your hands and kicks his legs, but he's too terrified to scream. Once your point is made, you lower him back to the ground slowly. Ah, that'll teach my idiot mouth. I won't make assumptions about you making assumptions, okay? Great. He brushes himself off and licks his thumb to smooth a hair back in place. If it's armor you're after, Marie he will set you up. She's got a knack for metal. He points out a door and jerks his head to the east. Show me what you have. So this is a uh, the fancy clothes shop. Superb robe. Great. Uh, I don't know. Fine robe, Nagati's girdle. Sure. What am I eyes be? That's stealing? No way. Fine leather armor. But just so you know, it's actually free in the back, Yolfer. Maybe just put some more stuff in there. I guess I need to uh, start selling stuff eventually. I actually like that we don't have a trait skill. It's always a bit troublesome to just uh, don't worry. Sh the vision's passed. shuffle the loot around. Mm -hmm. Okay. To the east? Oh yeah. To the gullet? Serpent's crown? Marie, his metal work. I guess we can check that out first. Postenago. You have truly put your foot in it this time. Dagnos? Adotella. You go to visit the luminous bathhouse, yes? Mm, whatever you request, the answer is no. Perhaps, why do you ask? My satchel. Like a fool, I left it inside. My ship is due to sail from Nekataka with the next high tide. If I do not find it, my casita will surely throw me overboard. Captain. Merla, I cannot swim. A look of horror spreads across his face. I would go by myself, but... Uh, the guards, they bar the doors to me without my casita present. They think I am a thief. Oh, they would never. He stares at his feet, his hands an anxious twisting knot in front of him. Why can't you ask your casita to, re to retrieve it, then? I would rather her not discover my incompetence. 
His eyes dart to the side as if looking for something or someone just outside his vision. I'm an, an understandable concern, I suppose. I would go by myself, but uh, I know, guards, I know. They bar the doors to me without my cousin. Are you present. a thief? No, of course not. His eyes widen in fright and he waves his hands frantically before you in warning gesture. I would go by myself, but uh, the guards they bar the doors to me without my casita present. They think I am I'll let thief. you know if I see it. Gelade. You mean it? Agrasima, Agrasima, I am in your debt. The air of misery suffusing him lifts for a moment. His eyes go wide and he grins. You notice a light sheen of sweat on his upper lip. He shifts his weight from foot to foot and stares at you intently. There is uh, one thing. Madiko, how could I have forgotten? He tugs at the collar of his shirt as if he's suddenly much too, sh much too hot. If you could, do not open the satchel. The contents are... The information is... He searches for the word. Propriety. You understand? Well, now I can't wait to see what's inside. No, no. <laughs> he makes a negating gesture in front of him. Please, my casita, she holds her trade secrets close. If she finds I have disclosed them to another, even unintentionally, I shall not live to make amends. He grabs your hands in his own clammy ones and shakes like a leafing a gale. I could just as soon leave you to your fate as help you. Calm your theatrics, I won't open the satchel. You do me a great favor. He claps your hands in his. Please, when you find the satchel, meet me at Peddler's Canal in Queen's Birth. Got it. How does experience oh work? Those who are not part of the team are far behind in experience, so how does it work? He needs 50, he needs 100. It's very close, but I still wonder how does it work. Aye, aye. Should I work till the, uh, should I wait till the morning? Marry his metal work? Okay, we gotta go inside, say, hey, Marihi, my old friend! And, uh... Don't know how... He or she will react? You never know. Probably he. Oh, it's a she. Never mind that. Keeping an eye Hmm, living iron? Mm -hmm. Bam. Sure thing. Mm -hmm. Real quiet. You're thieving ways. Soti. Stealing. That's all stealing. Lock difficulty 14. 13. That's insane. Total mechanic 7. It's not gonna work. Alright, uh, Marihi. I say, you look like someone who wants protection and a certain something about presence, Akira? Yeah, the Huana woman scans you up and down, nodding as she measures your proportions. Holler if any of the iron or steel laying around catches your fancy. Or if you need something repaired, I'm happy to take a glance. Show her the shards of the whispers of Yenwood. Can you do anything with these? Curious metalwork, I say. These engravings. Mary he runs her finger along the faint Galfatan runes. Enraptured, she sways on the spot until she shakes herself back into the moment, clearing her throat. How did you ever manage to break this wonder? <laughs> A god stepped on my castle. She narrows her eyes as if uh, weighing the truth of your words. <sighs> Forget I asked. <laughs> It's this is true. a small challenge. 1500 pyres is the price. What? Okay, let's repair Akira, it. Kara, I will get started at once. Have a seat. 
This will take time. My friend, your handsome blade is restored. A good thing it was made of exceptional steel. She balances the weapon on her palm and uh, sighs down at the craftsmanship. Ah, uh, such a shame to see it go. But go it must. Exceptional weapon. Okay. Looks good. My thanks. Uh, show me what you have to f sell. If you're ever in need of spare coin, I'd be happy to take that off your hands. Mine bell legs. Queen's rule. Two-handed, exceptional spear caster. What is that? Arbalist. Superb arbalist. Uh, pretty good. Fine. Fine is nice. Devil of Carol Bless breastplate legendary quality superb quality okay pretty good medium armor right there plus two max power pool that's a pretty good armor right there that's as basically as good as it gets Superb quality. Legendary. Can I... Do I have enough s crappy stuff to sell? How many sabers I want to sell? All of them. Obviously. Can we just go with weapons only? Let's buy... Whatever worth the less money. That's really not a lot of uh, money I'm getting for these uh, stuff I'm selling. Stiletto. Not at all. Large shields. Not terribly surprising, I have to say. How much I get? 200 for the small dagger. Okay, let's give me some money. I don't know. What if not weapons only? Whispers of Yenwood. Exceptional great sword. I don't think we can get that kind of money. But I can definitely sell some crappy armor. seem to make more money at least right now scale armor I'm just selling the trash if you could buy uh, this armor that would be really good but seems like I don't have enough even if I sell the fine padded armor uh, it doesn't go for a lot. I can sell a bunch of hoods. But these things are basically trash. What is this? Consumables. Okay, let's see what is worth a lot of money. And I don't want it. Like, fine dagger. I can just sell that. Do I really want? Do I? Can I really make twenty-seven thousand for this item? It looks like a really good item. Yeah. Legendary. Recovery time. 
base armor rating is 11. Plus 2 max power pool. Looks like a pretty good one. But I don't think I can make it. Still, something to keep in mind I suppose. For later. Queen's rule. It's only exceptionally good. Superb is what we want. Or legendary. Fine is nice. Uh, but I already have a bunch of fine stuff. Leathery wings. Is that... Some kind of uh, crafting item? It could be. Most likely is. Anyhow. Let's leave this store. You must gather your part and check out the bathhouse. Why not? Before venturing forth. Can I get inside though? I don't know. I'm considering uh, changing uh, around uh, the skills of my characters, so I'm gonna have higher mechanics on at least one of them. That would be nice. Also, I'm not doing much stealing. Hmm. I would need to have a character that has high stealth and sleight of hand for that, and I don't have that. Oh, that looks great. I love the statues outside already. Bad house guard. Okay, this place looks fancy. I see you brought your pain. Whoa. But you need come to ease it. Pity. A venerable elf sits beside the water, her creased and spotted skin slightly flushed by the heat. Numerous scars uh, mark her skin on face and torso alike, her eyes open. And their sharp gaze focus on, on you. What brings you to the bathhouse? It eases my pain. More than that is an awful long yarn. And they entered lickly. I like to hear it. I fecked in the broken stone war some two centuries gone by now. I left the woods of a deer for the eastern reach. I claimed to seek to protect our colonists. But in truth, I sucked the glory of battle. She sighs and touches her brow. Glory were need to be had. Throuth be tilt, I hold luckier than most. The Orleans or air glan fath walled blades that sheathed spirit as easily as flesh. Some of mine fellows were slocked at body and soul. Uh, come again? I, I don't quite follow your meaning. A bunch of Orleans killed her buddies. And she can't pro talk properly. You speak of uh, the mind hunters, Gafat and warrior ciphers. Aye, that I do. And a downright vicious bunch they are. What happened to you? That sounds horrible. Aye, it was. Half times when I sleep, I behold yet their blank eyes, gawning at nothing. What happened to you? One weird or the will of the gods, one. A farmer near a boot's log home invited the soldiers for dinner. It was hearsed, and the crop was rowdy. She and her man devised us a broad and gusty feast. Deer pie and salmon, a stew of cabbage, carrots, and potatoes. Squash roasted with pine nuts, and the sweetest honey bread I ever tasted. A weak smell spreads her mouth. The glan fathens riled the animals. By then we caught the trick, so the captain bade the farmer's family stay within. We skipped into the nicht, approached the thick swine, and the arrows began to fall. Sorry, ask. Lest there's anything you need, please let me to mine water. What? The woman daps herself with a warm clod. What brings you to the. Oh, okay. guy 
The cost of enjoying the bathhouse's unique offering is 1,000 copper what? per session. The bathhouse steward crosses his arms and smiles. His look holds an invitation, but a warning too. Why so much? A prudent question. He drops himself up to his full height and puts his hands behind his back. The bath waters are infused with hand refined luminous Adra, which promotes a holistic balance of the humors. <sighs> so it's a scam. Because of luminous Adra's remarkable qualities, it is also a significant investment to both supply and maintain. Ganor may tell you more if you're curious. He is something of an amateur alchemist. In addition to being a businessman of remarkable skill and insight. Next you tell me Luminous Adra grants the Bader ba eternal life. <laughs> would that it were so. Ganor would make good money. And perhaps I would receive a raise, yes? Hmm. The bathhouse steward chuckles heartily. Ganor seems a generous man. I have known worse, it is true. The bathhouse steward smiles, but his smile is tight at the edges and doesn't reach his eyes. Now to business. The price of this marvelous experience is 1,000 copper. I pass. So I can't go in? Would you care to enjoy the bath's offerings? I pass. So you kick me out or what? Nope. You just put me back. Wait. Quickly and quietly. They're naked! Hurvina. They're like properly naked. Oh boy. Hmm. Anyhow, uh, we need to find a vault in here. Not sure where. Seems like uh, they don't have a lot on them. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys and see you next time.